Alrighty then. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Matthew Baker of Beautiful New York Tours. A friend of mine, a fellow tour guide, did a blog a few years ago where he walked the entire length of Riverside Drive and asked me what my perspective on Riverside Drive was, and I said, I'm not really sure I have one. You know, it's a pretty street, uh, but I didn't realize just how historic it was. And, you know, it's easy to resent your friends when they're younger and handsomer and know more than you do, and so that was how I was feeling, uh, because I definitely know when other people know more than I do, and that was certainly the case with my friend. So he inspired me, uh, or maybe provoked me, to do a little more research on Riverside Drive, and the family that struck me was a family named Huntington, and I really want to talk about two people uh, in the Huntington family, Archer Milton Huntington and his wife, Anna Hyatt Huntington. Now, Anna probably has the higher profile between the two of them today because she was a sculptor. She wasn't just a sculptor. She was one of the great sculptors of her generation, and she was one of the few female sculptors to have any degree of real professional success in her day. We're talking the turn of the 20th century. Uh, both she and Archer were born in the uh, 1870s, uh, and he lived into his 80s, she lived into her 90s. But you know, during that you know, end of the 19th and beginning of the 20th century, uh, sexism was still strong enough uh, that women sculptors weren't given much of a chance. Uh, but Anna Hyatt Huntington had a magnificent career. What's interesting is that one of the two sculptures of hers on Riverside Drive is the sculpture of Joan of Arc, the first statue of a real live historic woman in New York City. I don't mean where a woman is seen as symbolic, like the Statue of Liberty, of course, or uh, one of the uh, great angel fountains or things like that, where, where a woman symbolizes something, but a statue commemorating a real person who was female. The Joan of Arc statue was the first one in New York City, and that was in 1915. Uh, and so Anna Hyatt Huntington did that, and about 60 blocks to the north of Joan of Arc, the Audubon Terrace features her incredible equestrian statue of El Cid. Now, why is El Cid there? Because the Audubon Terrace is the home of the Hispanic Society. That's where Archer comes in. Archer Milton Huntington was the heir to the Pacific Railroad uh, fortune. He was born into millions, but he did not choose to use that money to just loaf around and do nothing. He pursued a life of culture and philanthropy. Uh, it was that wonderful quotation uh, from a movie where, where a fellow speaks of you know, his parents leaving him enough money to do something, but not enough to do nothing. Well, Archer Huntington had enough to do nothing, but chose not to. He chose to make something of his fortune, and that is, I think, very admirable. Uh, he, at a very young age, in his late teens, fell in love with all things Spanish. This was on a family trip to Mexico where he saw uh, his first taste of Hispanic art in museums. And later he went to Spain and he decided he wanted to create a Spanish museum, a museum in New York City that compressed the soul of Spain as a culture into a single repository of art and letters. And he did. His family donated the land on which the Hispanic Society is located, and the rest of the Audubon Terrace as well. Uh, his cousin Charles Huntington was the chief architect for the complex, and Anna did the magnificent El Cid statue, uh, which visually and artistically anchors the terrace. Now, there were several cultural institutions there on the terrace. The Hispanic Society was not the only one. The Academy of Arts and Letters uh, is there, and once upon a time, you had the Numismatic Society and the Geographical Society, though those have both since moved. Uh, Archer Huntington believed 
that other big cultural institutions with lots of funding from people like him would be moving uptown, up to Washington Heights, uh, as downtown and midtown became more crowded. What he did not foresee was the advent of steel construction and the popularity of the elevator would lead developers to build up. Not up as a euphemism for north, but literally up skyward. And the kind of development uh, that Archer Huntington foresaw never really materialized. But the wonderful thing about the Hispanic society being in Washington Heights is that, of course, nowadays, Washington Heights is a very heavily Hispanic neighborhood, and while it is nowhere near as wealthy a neighborhood as Huntington envisioned it to be, the admission into the Hispanic Society Museum and Library is free. So anyone who wishes to uh, take in the culture and the soul of Spain on Riverside Drive the way uh, Archer Huntington uh, envisioned is free and welcome to do so. So these two remarkable people, uh, artists in their own right, whether as creative artists or curative artists, uh, really helped to make Riverside Drive what it became. And I encourage you to have a good look at it once it is safe to do so. Please check me out at Beautiful New York Tours. You can search Beautiful New York Tours on Facebook or email me at baker.tours at yahoo.com. Again, that is baker.tours at yahoo. Thank you very much.